the last game that we have to talk about, we have number two ranked Georgia, currently 5-0 on the year, going on the road to take on the 18th ranked Auburn Tigers, who are 4-1 so far. This game is going to be played on CBS with a 3.30 p.m. Eastern time kickoff. Georgia is a 14-and-a-half point favorite heading into this game. So, I want to talk about what Auburn has to do to win this game. Now, the first thing that has happened is that Bo Nix has to ball out. Now, last week against LSU, I feel like Bo Nix played the best game that I've ever seen him play in. And I watch a lot of Auburn football. I'm not an Auburn fan or anything like that. But I've been heavily critical of Bo Nix over the last couple of years, you know. But last week, I really felt like that was the best performance that I saw Bo Nix play in. Now, the wide receivers for Auburn haven't really been all that great. They got rid of their wide receivers coach. So, like, their wide receivers haven't really been good this year. But last week, Bo Nix was able to extend plays, give his wide receivers additional time to get open. I was really impressed, man. Like, Bo Nick's ability and his mobility was on full display. Like, you can see the talent and the potential flash when you watch Bo Nick's play last week. Like, I was really impressed with what he did. I really feel like Bo Nick's is at his best when he's forced to create. He reminds me a lot of Johnny Manziel. Remember Johnny Manziel when he was playing for Texas and them? Every time things were going bad, he was able to find a way and turn a bad play into a positive play rather that be a two three yard pickup that's what some of the better quarterbacks in football are able to do the best quarterbacks able to take a bad play and still able to pick up two three yards out of it and when you look at Bo Nix last week he was able to do that there were a lot of plays that should have resulted in you know negative yardage that he was still able to find something and get something going so for Bo Nix he's going to have to continue to play good football and he's going to have to have another great game when he balls out because he's going against a Georgia defense that's simply unfair. Georgia has this defensive lineman. He, he has number 99. I believe his name is Jordan Davis. Bro, this dude is unfair. Last week against Arkansas, Jordan Davis was getting off his brocks and running all the way out to the edge to stop these Arkansas outside rushing plays. Like, I was just really blown away. Like, I was like, bro, is this dude human? This dude is big as hell. He he reminds me a lot of Aaron Donald, but bigger, faster, and stronger. And that's scary, man. Like, I've never seen a defensive tackle who's not only able to just get off the block, but also chase down a run play. Like, this dude, Jordan Davis, is an absolute freak. He's not the only monster that Georgia has on defense. Like, Georgia doesn't have football players. They have monsters. They have freaks. And if you're Auburn, okay, how are you going to head them yourself up front? Because if you can't win up front in the trenches, this game is already over. It's not even a point talking about this game. It's not even a point watching the game if Auburn can't handle themselves up front. Now, I'm not saying they have to play a spectacular game, but you have to be able to do enough that you can at least establish your offense and at least somewhat have somewhat of a rushing attack, okay? Now, a lot of people are going to be like, well, if Georgia shuts down Tank Big Speed, then it's over. Like, not completely true because you still have to account for the rushing ability of Bo Nix. Now, we saw what Georgia did against Arkansas last week, and Arkansas has a great group of running backs. You also have one of the best dual threat QBs in the SEC in KJ Jefferson, and they absolutely stomped him. So you're probably saying, okay, why can't we do that against um, Auburn? And you very well can. So for Auburn, your offensive line is going to have to be able to handle themselves. And they're going to have to be able to sustain their blocks. Because, man, I know it, I know that it, that's a really difficult task, man. Georgia has freaks. They have freaks, man. So for Auburn, if you're going to have a chance of putting off this upset, man, like your offense is going to have to be able to handle themselves up front in the line of scrimmage, okay? That if you can't if you can't block these monsters that are in front of you, then the game's already over. Now, if you're able to do that, the next thing is going to be 
how successful can Auburn be running the football? Because the strength of Auburn's offense is the rushing attack. Their weakness is if they have to beat you throwing the football. Not only because I don't really trust Bo Nix all that much of a passer, but I don't really trust his wide receivers also. His wide receivers had also let him down a lot. You had some drops. You... It's just a lot of inconsistencies with this passing attack. So I think it's really important that you establish the ground game with Tank Bixby, with Bo Nix. And on top of that, you know, not even just a ground game. You know, try to get the short passing game going. Try to get some bubble screens going. You know, try to get some half-ass screen plays going. You know, try to get some easy throws in there. Try to move the ball methodically because sometimes... A lot of people, when they play Georgia, they try to get these big plays and they ultimately end up paying the price because they end up in third and long situations. Don't put yourselves in these third and long situations like Arkansas did because Arkansas was in a lot of obvious passing situations, third and 20s, third and 15s, where they had to throw the football like try to pick up enough yardage that at least on third down, you are predictable. You could run an RPO, you could pass the football, you could do play action. Action, you could run the football like try to put yourselves in manageable third down situations because if you're in obvious passing situations that Georgia defense is going to eat you up especially when you don't have wide receivers who can consistently win on the outside now can Auburn hang around in this game until the fourth quarter that's the biggest question I was asking myself when Georgia played Arkansas. A lot of people, myself included, thought that Arkansas was going to be able to hang around to the fourth quarter, and Arkansas wasn't even able to hang around to the end of the first quarter. So for Auburn, can you put yourself in a position, in a position, in a situation going into the fourth quarter that you're only down by 10 points? That's where I'm looking at. Now, we don't know the status of JT Daniels. We don't really know what's going on. Kirby Smart, at the time of recording this, still hasn't really gave us all that much. It's pretty much day-to-day, so we still don't really know what's going on, but it's still expected that Stetson Bennett is going to get first-team reps. Now, if Stetson Bennett is the QB, we're probably going to see more of Georgia continuing that dominant ground game that they had last week. Auburn's run defense, however... It's pretty good. They're 17th in college football and rushing yards per game allowed. They're 16th in yards per carry allowed, 2.9. So I don't think that this is going to be a game that Georgia is going to be able to win with Stetson Bennett only throwing 11 passes. I feel like going against Auburn, they're still going to have to be able to, you know, get some things going in the passing game. And if you're an Auburn fan, you know, if you could have a better performance stopping the rain game of Georgia you should be feeling pretty confident if Stetson Bennett has to throw the ball 20 times because then you know Stetson Bennett he's not bad but when it comes to winning big games he's definitely not really your preferred quarterback per se especially on a tough hostile road environment in Auburn so I think that if you're Arkansas okay you weren't able to do that you weren't able to stop the rushing attack of Georgia, and you weren't able to force Georgia in situations where they had to throw the football. So if you're Auburn, you have to be able to try to win on the early downs, try to stop the run game early on first and second down, and try to force Georgia to have to get into situations where they have to beat you in third and long or an obvious third down passing situation, similar to what Georgia did to Arkansas last week. Another thing is that special teams is going to be huge for Auburn because they need some big returns to put themselves in good field position. Last week, Georgia's special teams was really dominant because Arkansas had a lot of drives when they were backed up inside their own 20 and whatnot. So Arkansas pretty much had to go the length of the field if they wanted to put points up on the board. If you're Auburn, you're going to have to make sure that you have some big returns. You also can't afford to have no missed field goals because you're going to need every possession when it comes to Georgia. Even if JT Daniels doesn't play in this game, like you're still going to have to be able to come 
come up and make sure that you're making the most out of your drives because Georgia probably is going to have success running the football on your defensive line, but you don't want them to run for almost 300 yards like how they did against Arkansas last week. I feel like if you're Arkansas, if you can hold Georgia to at least 150 yards on the ground, I feel like that's somewhat of a victory because 150 yards probably to me still shows that Georgia has to do some damage in the passing game and I really feel like you're going to have to force Stetson Bennett to work like you just can't allow him to only throw 11 passes like he did last week and I'm not confident in Stetson Bennett being able to the beat this Auburn defense strictly by himself just throwing the football so I don't know what Auburn has to do I don't know if you want to stack the box or whatnot but I really feel like the focal point is going to have to be that rushing attack because if JT Daniels doesn't play then I don't really think that Stetson being that quarterback is going to scare anybody no disrespect you know he's okay but on the road in a tough environment like you feel pretty good but I'm still going to roll with Georgia to get the victory here um, I just don't really know if Auburn is going to be able to win the battle up front, man, because you got these monsters and these giants like Jordan Davis. Like, I don't even I don't even know how you block a guy like Jordan Davis. Like, what do you do? Do you try to quadruple team him? Do you, I don't even know what you try to do because you I don't even know how you I, I honestly don't know what to tell you, man. This dude Jordan Davis is something special, man. Like I never seen a D for the tackle that's able to not only get off his block going against the off the guard or center, but able to have enough speed to get out to the edge, man, and chase people down. Like that dude has a motor. He had, uh, I don't even know what to describe it, man, but I'm taking Georgia. Even though I do feel like Auburn would be a little bit more competitive in this game than what Arkansas was, but not by a lot. I still Georgia, I still feel like Georgia rolls in this game. I feel like Georgia's going to win this game 38, well, 31 to 14 is my final score prediction in this game. I still think that Georgia's going to cover, but I do feel like Auburn will at least put a couple of touchdowns on the board. But I just feel like Georgia is just way too much up front for Auburn. That's why I got to take Georgia to win this game. So you guys let me know who you guys have winning this game down in the comment section down below.